If you're worried about your account being phished, Google's Advanced Protection Program is your best bet at locking it down. In order to add any device to that account, you'll need to use one of these. These are universal two-factor or UTF authentication tokens, and setting them up for the first time can be a little tricky depending on what operating system you're on. We'll walk you through setting them up on Windows, OS X, Linux being Debian and Arch, as well as most smartphone operating systems. Windows is the most popular operating system, so we'll start there. It's relatively simple to set up universal two-factor authentication tokens on Windows, but you'll need to make sure that you download the Google Chrome browser, otherwise you won't be able to add the devices. Let's get started. Up-to-date versions of Windows can use U2F tokens without additional modification. In order to enroll your account in Google Advanced Protection Program, navigate to the official website in the Chrome browser. You need to make sure that you're in the Chrome browser because if you're in Firefox or another browser, you won't be able to enroll your security keys. Look for the button that says Get Started and click there. Now before you do this, make sure you've enrolled in two-factor authentication on your account because you'll need it to proceed through the next settings. Here you'll see a web page that advises you you need to purchase at least two keys. So don't just buy one because you won't be able to go on to the next setting. Once you've purchased two keys, click on I have two security keys to proceed. Now you'll need to authenticate. At this point, you'll need to have enabled two-factor verification. Go ahead and enter the code that it sends you in order to enable the setting on your account. Now that Google is completely sure that you are who you say you are, you'll see two different slots to register keys. Click on the first one, and it'll ask you if you have your security key. Don't connect it yet, but when you're ready, click Next, and then insert the key into your USB drive. After a second, tap the gold disk in order to proceed to the next step and register the security key. Name the security key something memorable so you won't get it confused, especially if you're using a Bluetooth dongle instead of a traditional security key. Tap next, and then you'll move on to register your second security key. Follow the same process and enter your second security key, tapping the gold disk in order to register. Oops. Sometimes you'll need to do it twice. Once your second key has associated, type in a memorable name and hit done. You'll now see that both of your keys are registered, which satisfies the requirements to move on to the next page. Hit continue. Finally, you'll see a page that lists all the various restrictions you'll have to live with if you decide to enable advanced protection. You'll see you'll no longer be able to use third-party apps like Apple Mail, Contacts, and Calendar. If you're not ready for this, you might want to reconsider at this point. If you are ready, go ahead and click on Turn On, and you'll see a final prompt to make sure that you are really serious about enabling this feature. Click on Turn On in order to finish. Now, you should be set up. Advanced Protection is on, and we can go to our account settings in order to manage things like revoking devices or seeing who signed into our account. That's it for Windows, super simple, and because Windows supports these keys natively, you can get started pretty much right away. Kali and Black Arch Linux are two popular distributions used by hackers and security researchers around the world. But Linux doesn't support U2F tokens out of the box, so in order to use Google's Advanced Protection Program, we'll need to download a couple libraries. Don't worry, it's not difficult, so let's get started. Accessing your Google Advanced Protected account in Kali Linux is relatively easy after you download Google Chrome because it's not included in the default Kali installation. 
In order to do this, we also had to solve a couple challenges, and this was based off the most recent uh, downloaded version of the Kali Linux system. So if you run into these same issues, we wanted to walk you through and make sure you know what's going on. So first, in order to do all this, you'll need to install a program called GDebbie. This is a package manager which simplifies the installation of Google Chrome and will prevent any headaches from any unfulfilled uh, requirements for running Google Chrome. So when we tried to install GDB the first time, we ended up getting an error message that said it couldn't find it. And after some investigation, we found out that the default sources.list in our version of Kali Linux that we downloaded from the website yesterday, uh, kali.org, uh, was wrong. Um, it was actually not able to find anything. So we opened it up and we could see that this is the proper configuration. So if you want to open this up yourself, and take a look, you can just type in nano etc apt sources.list and that should open up this right here which will give you the list of all the different sources that Kali Linux checks for updates. So it should look like this, deb http kali.org slash kali, kali rolling main contrib non-free. So if that looks as it does here, then you should be good to go and you'll ready, be ready to uh, download GDB when the time comes. So to get started, first we'll type the command to download Google Chrome. So as you can see, wget https uh, dlgoogle.chrome slash linux direct google chrome stable current amd64.deb. Now that will be continuously updated. So as new versions roll out, that will stay the URL. So you can continue to use this command for a while um, and it will produce the most recent version of Google Chrome. That's important because if you download a later version, it may not have the libraries necessary to go ahead and use your universal two-factor key. So when this is finished downloading, we'll be able to go to our next command, which is to install GDB. So GDB is a package manager. And when we're installing, we can type sudo apt get install GDB. And we use an asterisk at the end to make sure we install any core libraries or other packages that GDB might need. When GDB has finished setting up, we'll be able to navigate to where we downloaded Google Chrome, which in this case we just did to the root directory, and then use GDB to install both it and any required packages. All right. So the command we'll be using is sudo GDB and then the location of the download of Google Chrome. So the file should be named something like Google Chrome stable amd64.deb and you can type uh, sudo gdb and then the location, enter, and it will not only process the installation for this file, but also the installation of anything that it might need. Uh, so that's any sort of packages, any sort of libraries, anything that otherwise it would not work without. So go ahead and after accepting this, sit back and wait while it installs Google Chrome, and it will install the most recent version of Google Chrome, which is important because again, if you install an old one, this will not work. So finally, when we have Google Chrome installed, you can access it by opening up Google Chrome with Google Chrome stable, tac tac no tac sandbox. Now you have to type that at the end, otherwise it won't run in Kali Linux. So after doing that, go ahead and press return and it should go ahead and open up a Google Chrome window with the warning that you're using an unsupported command flag, no sandbox, uh, security and stability will suffer. And that's just a uh, issue you have to work with with Kali Linux. So we'll go to gmail.com and we'll log into our account uh, bigtestingchicken at gmail.com and we should see our security challenge. So this is the point at which we will plug in our universal two-factor key. It'll blink green. And when we're ready to log into our two-factor verified account, just tap the gold disk. It will respond to the challenge. And just like that, we're able to access our Google Advanced Protected account on Kali Linux. So next up, we'll take a look at Arch. Similar to Debian, we'll need to open a terminal window in order to download the necessary library. We'll use a package manager called pacman in order to do this. In a terminal window, type pacman, tac capital S, lowercase s, and then lib u2f 
tac host. We already have this library installed here, but once that's installed in your system, we should be able to simply go to Google Chrome and attempt to log in to our Google Advanced Protected account. Once we see the security challenge, we can just plug in our USB key and press the gold disk to access our Google account data. And just like that, we have it set up on our Arch-based system. Okay, next up is Mac OS. While the process is similar, it can actually be a little bit confusing because if you get it wrong the first time, it can be difficult to get set up correctly. Insert your security key and Mac OS will detect it as some sort of input device. Hit continue and you'll need to press the gold button on your security key in order for Mac OS to try to determine what kind of keyboard it is. Since it's not a Japanese keyboard, you'll need to select ANSI as the correct input and hit done. Just like that, you're able to use your two-factor authentication key with Mac OS just the same as we did with Windows and Linux. Next up, smartphones. Android is probably the easiest system to add a universal two-factor key to, thanks to the ability to add them via NFC. With this, you can simply place your key against the back of your phone and roll them super easily. To get started, you'll need to enter the credentials for the account you wish to access. Here, we've added our test account, and once you've filled out the detail, you can hit next to proceed to the very next screen. In the screen, you can enter the password, and when that's done, hit next, and you should receive a challenge from Google asking you to put your 2FA device against the back of the screen. When you do that, you'll, there you go, you will get a terms of service to confirm that you want to log in. And as soon as you start seeing your messages load, then you know that it's accepted your key. And just like that, you're done. Okay, in order to add an iOS device, we're going to need to do something a little bit different. Because we can't use the same kind of NFC-based authentication we used before, we're going to need to use a Bluetooth-based token instead, like this. In order to do this, we'll need to download the Google Smart Lock application from the Apple App Store. I've already downloaded the app, and it's important that you do, because without it, you won't be able to see your security key even if you enable Bluetooth. Go ahead and open it as soon as it's downloaded, and this is the point at which we'll accept any permissions it needs, and we will log into the account that has Google Advanced Protection enabled. In this case, we're going to log into our test account, bigtestingchicken at gmail.com, and it will request our password just like any other account. But this is where if we were phishing the account and we were simply using a stolen password, we would only get about this far. So now we see the challenge screen, which will tell us that in order to go any further, we need to pair our security key. So to do that, press down on the button for about five seconds until you see the blue flashing light. And as soon as you see it appear on the screen like this, just go ahead and tap, and you'll need to enter the six digit pin found on the back. So we'll enter the six digits here, and as soon as it is authenticated, let's enter the pin, then we will be able to connect uh, this via Bluetooth and bypass the challenge screen simply by pressing the button just like we did in Mac OS. So as you can see, we have pressed the button and we have now proceeded straight through the challenge screen and we are connected to our Google Advanced Protected account. So this is an example of how you can connect a iOS device to a Google Advanced Protected uh, account so you can have access to your data without using an NFC device or a USB security key. These universal two-factor authentication tokens are easy to set up, but they're also easy to lose. Make sure you have at least two of them and you keep one in a safe place so you can lock out any keys that might be lost or stolen. Thanks for watching this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you next time.